Yeah, we're just playing words with friends. <laughs> yes, we are. And on that note, welcome to the Red Report, <laughs> <laughs> the longest running podcast. Um, proud to be part of the TalkSport Fans Network. Well, the USA might have been the centre of media attention this whole week, but now the focus shifts of football in South Yorkshire. With two derbies in one weekend, this Remembrance Weekend will answer the question everybody's asking, who will come up trumps? As always, with us this evening, I know, all the, you can tell it's been a boring day at work, I guarantee you it doesn't. <laughs> uh, Steve, as always, is with us, as well as Red's report, Ian, dropping in this evening. How are we doing, boys? Very, very Hello. good, thank you. And the man to bring some factual information, a bit of know-how, <laughs> some a bit order. of professionalism, <laughs> because he boosts our figures week in, week out. I thought it was Adam. BBC Radio, Sheffield. Oh, it is Adam. <laughs> uh, evening, Adam, how are you? Good evening, gentlemen. I'm very good, thank you. Very good. Um, so, uh, before we go on to Derby match tomorrow, uh, we sort of prepared for that next match. With a 3 1 a good away victory uh, at Port Vale. We talked last week about, you know, they were flying and what was it going to be, what sort of team. I think everybody was happy that it was a very much a full strength team and goals from Roberts on his 100th appearance for the club, uh, Davis Killer Dunn and Phillips. Um, I mean, Ian, it, it's become that thing again of like an away match, we worry a little bit less. No matter if it's in the FA Cup or whatever, we just sit yeah. a bit more relaxed. I saw a stat today that we this so far this season we haven't conceded a, a goal in the first half of an away match. It's seven nil if, if you want to look at it like that. Uh, but still, nevertheless, a professional appointment and uh, good to see Roberts on the score sheet on its hundredth uh, appearance for the club. Yeah, I think we need to make a submission to the EFL to play all our games away from home. I think we do yeah. really well this season if that was yeah. the case. Um, uh, I thought he would play a strong team uh, a week between games uh, against his old club. He'd want to stick one over on them, um, Clark. So, yeah, job done. It could have been a tricky one because they were top of League Two. Um, but it's given us a, a very winnable second round fixture. Uh, and without wanting to tempt fate, it's a really good, we've almost one step into the third round now, aren't we? So uh, it was all good on the day. Yeah, well, we have to be careful because the next tie's at home, but talk about it. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> um, Steve, as a reward, um, Bristol Rovers, um, your mate Phillips back on the score sheet. Play, uh, penalty. It's good to see him back, first of all, yeah? Like, I know people have been injured, and I know we... <laughs> what is team. wrong with your two today? You like smiling Cheshire cats. No, it is good to see him back. And same as anything, when he's on, on form and when he's playing well... Phillips is definitely one of the better better attacking midfielders that we've got. There's no two ways about that. No two ways about that. But for me, and the bit that I always question, is just his consistency. He's just not consistent, unfortunately. And tomorrow, it'll be interesting because I can't see as he can drop anybody to make a space for Phillips. Although he, he, he scored a penalty, fair enough. He's good with penalties. But for me, tomorrow, I just I can't see how he can come back in. It'd be on bench, I would have thought. But he shouldn't walk straight back into the side. Not for me, anyway. Um, I mean, Adam, it's good to see that he's found a little bit of consistency as well, despite the injury to Phillips. You know, um, Keeler Dunn, I think, is a bit. It's quite versatile and can play anywhere. Uh, Humphreys, we spoke about last week, is seems to have made a difference, and if has almost unlocked, you know, an extra 5-10% in those players around him. Um, going into this one then, have you been to any of the press conferences at all today? Yeah, but I did the Barnsley press conference this morning and I've listened through to um, Steve Evans' uh, chatter earlier on. Um, both What's were... The from the Barnsley camp? I know they never give much away, but in regards to injuries or anything, any worries? or I don't ask anymore, Carlo. Um, no, I, I literally, yeah, there was what there was a question about Sam Cosgrove who it was kind of like, well, he might be fit, he might not, you'll have to see, which is the answer we get every week. Look, if somebody's out long term, Daryl's happy to talk about it. If somebody's a, a maybe, he doesn't talk about it. So, 
we'll, we'll keep kind of either me or Doug on rotation. We'll we'll ask just so that it, it don't get too boring. Um, but essentially, that's it. Um, I look. I think the key difference between Barnsley and Rotherham going into this game is that Barnsley have started to find um, a, an eleven, a settled team, a settled way of playing. Um, and they seem to have some element of a little bit more consistency to uh, <coughs> and results, which is good to see. And I think even within that, you can interchange in a few positions. Look, you know, we've seen uh, Killip, Russell, O'Keefe, Gent, Waters, other people that weren't necessarily starters at the start of the season or people that anyone would consider to be regular, regular starters or stick their hands up at the minute. And what that does mean is that you've got Cotter, you've got Pines, um, you've got uh, lads in the middle, in Matty Craig maybe, that all thought that they'd got a, a starting place, but they're all kind of waiting in the wings now. And that's uh, quite the opposite really to Rotherham, who just, um, well, the, 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 the players don't seem to be uh, cohesive, the, the fans aren't buying things greatly, um, and look, if, if there's ever a time to play Rotherham, now would appear to be the time. What, um, Ian, we, we talked a lot, haven't we, on the show about strength and depth and, and sometimes worries that we might be lacking. But it has to be said that now he's found like a settled 11 13 to choose from. We, we, we don't seem to give in on quality. I mean, Russell has shown that when he needed to come in, he actually he, he became like almost. The first name, sorry, the first name like on the team sheet. He's, he's shown with some of the younger players alone, you know, um, Yamati Craig, obviously the, 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 the keeper as well. He's shown that, you know, when, when he takes them off, Killer has, has, done, has done well. So, in essence, we are, a, it feels like a stronger team now, although they're the same players, than we were at the beginning of the season, just because we can bring a Sam Cosgrove off, like it's decent. We could probably bring a Phillips on. As, as a replacement, which doesn't really give in on quality then, does it? No, and I think you're seeing now as we get into early November, some players are finally playing into a bit of form. Um, and that has, uh, helps massively. I think the, the side looks better balanced with uh, Ghent on that left side. I think Russell being further, further up, almost a number eight, um, adds... Uh, a better balance as well in the middle. We've not got two similar players side by side in Connell and uh, Russell. I think you're just starting to see some lads are taking their opportunity where, yes, Cotter had a good run, but I still used to bemoan the fact that we didn't get any end product from him. Uh, when he would beat players, he's cross invariably never found a red shirt. And... They learn some of them are learning the hard way that you'll go out for a couple of weeks. So I think the penny's dropping with a few of them as well that uh, they're playing into a bit of form and they know that if they don't keep those standards up, they'll be back out on the sidelines and somebody else will have the shirt. So yeah. I think it's just settling down as well uh, with a few months into the season now and it start, we're starting to see a bit, bit of form from some of these players. Steve, if you, if you look at the boundary sort of like results over the last few weeks and performances, of course, is there any area you you sort of would worry about? I mean, it's a derby, which which adds, you know, it's a Friday night, quarter past seven. Obviously, you know, Sky Sports doing their thing. It is what it is. Um, should be plenty of people inside Oakwell, so the atmosphere at home should be a good one. Yeah. Is there anything on the pitch that you think? We just need to be wary because this is, you know what I mean? Are you, are you worried about the defence, about the base, which you've, you've mentioned a couple of times? Is there, is there any area that you sort of think, mm, not, not so sure about I think, that? I think my only reservation is goalkeeper. Yeah, Killip's gone in, come in and done a decent job to a certain extent. Um, it's not really, I had a decent save against Port Vale game before. Um, he could have got his thermos out and his, his pan of hot water and made his a cup of tea because he had no to do. So you can't really judge him on that. Um, was it right to drop Slanina? Yeah, I think he needed a little bit of a break just to gather himself and perhaps have a look at his own performances. But everywhere else on, on, on pitch at minute does seem to be 
gelling. They seem to be getting an understanding. DKD and Humphreys uh, are, are working really, really well together. Uh, Watt has added on to that. He's looking sharp. He's looking quick. He looks a different player to what he was definitely last season. Um, so, no, midfield, like you say, we've got quite a choice now. If, if you're starting with Russell, uh, Russell Connell, um, I suppose you've, you've still got your Matty Craig, you've still got uh, Phillips to come into that. Defensive-wise, Dejivny is looking brilliant again. I can't understand these people on certain forums that are slagging him off. Obviously, they haven't watched uh, First Division football for a long time, too busy watching Man City. Um, you know, and such as, such as him, Roberts and Earl seem to have, a, again, an understanding Gent, for me, like we said last week, what a what a balance he's brought to the side, what a breath of fresh air he's brought to that left-hand side. And O'Keefe, not his biggest fan, got to be honest, but he's playing well and he deserves he deserves his place. He's come up uh, with some assists, hasn't he's he? Come up, he's, he's, playing, he's playing really well going forward. It, yeah. Again, I, I sometimes question, question his defensive abilities, but we never seem to be able to get a right back that can defend. They can all go forward, but never do all coming backwards. <laughs> um, but no, if I had a question mark, my question mark at the minute is over the two keepers. Uh, I think they're both much of a muchness. Personally, I'd still rather go with Slanina than kill it because we've seen kill it make some howlers over the last 12, 18, 12 months. But uh, no, it's quite positive. Very positive for tomorrow, I think. So, Adam, what, what is the story with Rotherham then? I mean, pre-season, obviously they brought Steve Evans in really, really early, which is a good move. Um, and they bought players that you thought, I mean, we all said it, didn't we? I mean, except for Ian, who said Wigan, but we all said Rotherham <laughs> and Birmingham. Stop mentioning that, will you? <laughs> oh, shocker. Rotherham, oh, shocker. Rotherham and Birmingham. And that's before a ball was kicked, just by looking at the squad and some of the players they had. And they were always, you know, up there for favourites. I mean, this moment in time, um, 14th or 17 points in comparison, Barnsley 8th on 22 points. Goal difference, rather than minus two, Barnsley plus three. What has been the story? Has it been injuries? Is it the cohesion? Is it getting used to League One football? What, 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 what's been the story of their sort of below expectation performance so far? Well, it certainly has been below expectation for, for everyone. I, like many, tip Rotherham to be uh, chasing the top two. Definitely playoffs. That was my thinking with Rotherham before the season. And the names that Rotherham had brought in um, suggested that was going to be the case. Look, Steve came back with a couple of games to go at the end of last season. I was at the New York on the final day of the year when they hit Cardiff for five, I think it was. Um, and everyone kind of went into the summer from a Rotherham United perspective with a little bit more hope with Steve Evans back, the guy that had led uh, the Millers from League Two to the Championship in his first stint and used 956 players in the process. Um, <laughs> everyone expected there to be a lot of signings in the summer and there needed to be because there's a bit of turnover. Um, and when you start getting names in like Cam Dawson and Reese James from Sheffield Wednesday, who the Wednesday fans were disappointed to lose, when you get a couple of the back lads from Portsmouth who had won the division in, uh, in Rafferty and Raggett, when you look at Malik Wilkes coming in uh, as well on loan, who at League One level was phenomenal for, for Hull and for, for Doncaster. Then you've got Johnson Clark Harris, who's obviously been fantastic for Peterborough for a few years. Liam Kelly, who was a pivotal part of Coventry's rise up the divisions. Then a number of others like Hungbo and a song and a variety of other other kind of players in there that you looked at all that with the players that they managed to keep and genuinely on paper, you thought they've got some real quality. Look, you know, Wilkes, Jordan Hugill, Johnson Clark Harris, Sam Nombe at a million pounds who they'd signed the year before from Exeter. Look, as a forward line on paper, I mean, that there should be goals flying in left, right and centre there. And it's just not happened. It's just not, they've not found a way of playing. They've not really settled on a formation. Um, you know, they have had a couple 
of key injuries, which Steve Evans points to every three seconds in terms of Johnson, Clark, Harris and Sean Raggett primarily. But Clark Harris has been available for at least half the season. Uh, Raggett has been a miss. Look, he's a good player at, at the level. And then there's like Liam Kelly, who's missed a bit of time as well. So look, a few of the new signings haven't been there all the way through. But for me, even with the players that have been out, I still expect the players that have been available for Rotherham to be better. I've, I've seen a couple of their games this season. Um, they were awful at Leighton Orient. They were awful at Exeter. Lost both games without scoring. Um, they've only won one recently and they were unconvincing in that one. They're out of the FA Cup to, to Cheltenham at home, which was a real surprise. And at the minute, the fans look somewhat, some were very happy with Steve Evans coming back and some weren't. He's, as Daryl Clark said today, the man is, is Marmite in football. And he's, but he's, as also Daryl said today, he's a winner. Look at his record. With pretty much every club he's been at, he's done well. He, he's, he's managed to do it. He's got his own style. On the touchline, he obviously winds people up rotten with his assistant, Paul Rayner, who I've seen today. He's got a touchline by himself after Evans has had some. And um, they, <laughs> they they can wind people up. Um at the moment, look, if Rotherham lose at Oakwell, then would a significant proportion of the Millers fan base be turning, have turned even more? Yeah, I think so. But Evans has got a bit of credit in the bank from the first time. It, it was a slow start in his first season when he first joined Rotherham and he's got the backing of the chairman. So are we expecting any any any? decision like over the next month or so probably not is Evans likely to get January at least and and look to build yeah but they've got to start picking up some points soon and moving into that top 10 otherwise questions are going to continue to be asked yeah it's a lot of money to be to, to spend to finish mid-table isn't it with the names that you mentioned as well yeah Look, it's not a lot of transfer fees, Carlo. I mean, like uh, th this is an ongoing discussion as well that people have said, oh, well, they haven't spent that much. Well, they have. In wages, they've, you know, Rotherham's squad in terms of the wages compared to when Paul Warren was in charge just a couple of years ago is, is chalk and cheese. They haven't spent a lot of money in the summer. They've spent a little bit. It's been a lot of freeze and some loans. But, yeah, the, the, the chairman has invested, certainly from a wage perspective. Um, Ian? Where do you see the key battles then? Because you listen to this and you think as a Barnsley fan, you know what? Might be an all right night tomorrow. Might be cold. <laughs> put your big coat on, put your scarves on. But actually, for a, for, for a derby, Barnsley have got a bit of a, a, a tradition of turning up for these. We remember the run Sheffield Wednesday were on a couple of seasons ago and they came and, and everything else. Um, a, bit, a bit like the question I asked Steve earlier. But is it the goalkeeper for you? That's maybe the, the question for, for, for Bardsley or have you got anywhere else where you say, you know, this could be won or lost in, in one, area, one area of the pitch? I agree with Steve with the keeper. Uh, but we, we still, although we started to click and score goals, we struggle to keep clean sheets and that's defending as a team as a defensive unit, not just a goalkeeper. We still let goals in. Um, we're not watertight. So I would say that's our weakness, that we do seem to gift, was a gift, but give the opposition chances. Uh, but our strength, I would say, it, like you said before, is Humphreys and Keeler Dunn are clicking. Um, the midfield, like the balance along the side, Ghent, if he plays... I certainly like his um, his attacking intent and he's always prepared to tack a, a defender on, tack somebody on and get the ball in the box. So I think strength-wise, up front, but I'm still yet to be convinced about us defensively. As much as I like Roberts, I think he's had a much better last couple of, maybe six weeks. Um, he tends to leave Pines on the bench. Um, De Givine, they seem to be, although the the linking in well, the, 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 as, a, as a unit, we're still gifting teams goals and we're having to score twos and threes to win matches. Uh, so that's my concern for tomorrow night. Steve, um, Adam mentioned about um, Steve Evans being sort of like Marmite. And I think, you know, Barnsley have had 
a hell of a lot of coaches over the last X amount of, of, of seasons. And we've had some of them. We, we, we've, we've wandered. I mean, last year, you know, on the sideline, pretty quiet, not very animated. That's one side. On the other side, you've got Steve Evans level. That is sort of like, you know, forever getting in trouble. Bands, very, very vocal. Clark seems to be in the middle somewhere. It's, it's just sort of at a third into the season. Now that the results are turning, I'm sort of like extremely <clears throat> unhappy and best manager ever. Where where does that sit with you at the moment? Because he, he seems to we've queried it. Everyone like is this working? But in the last few weeks since the international break, results have started turning around. Not only results, performances as well. So how, how do we rate Daryl Clark now? Uh, I think his uh, his demeanour and everything at the side of the pitch. I, I like he gets involved. He's not dancing up and down sidelines like Conti did or anything like that, but he's not just going to sit on his backside. However, what you've got to realise is that technical area at Oak Well is not very big. So they have to take it in turns. I think they draw tickets. So it's Devaney's five minutes. Then it's, you know, then somebody else will come out. Then there's Bitorum there. And then, so um, they all seem to have an input, which is nice to see, which means you'd think that the players are taking notice of all of them. However, I would like to hope that Clark's got the got the sort of the decisive factor and the final word and all that sort of thing. And it's all right all around saying you do this, you do that, you do other. But if he says, now nah, then Connor sit this end down, I'm telling him what I want to do. <laughs> that's what you that's that's ideally what you want, isn't it? And um- I said it earlier on, Adam, it's a, it's a big football weekend because there is the small matter of another South Yorkshire derby on Sunday lunchtime, isn't it? Just after dinner time, is it? Yeah, yeah. There's a, I think there's another game, yeah. yeah. Chesterfield, the... a Chesterfield play. Yeah, yeah Chesterfield, Doncaster, correct. Fantastic, yeah. there you go, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so what does your weekend look like then and how? A bit of insight then in the um, football having studio. Who, a, who decides who goes where? Is it sort of like, is it like the senior reporter saying, well, I quite fancy spot a lunch Sunday afternoon, so I'll do that one. Your lads, you know, get yourself a pucker pie and a cup of tea at Oakwell on Friday. How, how does that work? Or is there like... Sometimes it's logistics. I mean, sometimes like, um, let's say last Saturday, Andy needed to be somewhere over Northwest Way, so he did the Blackburn game or whatever else. Sometimes it's logistics. Most of the time, every... Kind of four to six weeks, we'll sit down and look at the next four to six weeks and try and plot who's going to go where. Um, me and Andy don't mind traveling a bit more. Um, Rob likes traveling a bit less. So we, we kind of divvy things up. My approach to it is always I like to try and get across the patch as much as I can. Because when you're hosting a show and talking to callers from all of the local clubs, I just find it it's a lot easier when you've you've seen all the teams as much as possible. I'm doing okay on that on that count this season. Um and then you just kind of work it out and 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 mix it up. So this weekend uh, Friday's normally my non-working day, but I'm doing a, a swimming challenge this week, which some of you may have seen for children in need. So I'm I'm working tomorrow morning, working, swimming. Um and then Andy and Rob are going to be at Oakwell tomorrow night with A.D. Moses and Les Payne, the uh, Rotherham uh, journalists. That's our, our team tomorrow. Then I've got a, a tasty League Two game on Saturday, doing Doncaster against Notts County with uh, me, Tom and Mickey Walker, with uh, Chesterfield also in action against Accrington. Um, and then Sunday, we, uh, me, Rob and Andy are all at Bramall Lane for the Steel City Derby. So Rob's going to be hosting there. Me and Andy are doing the commentary with Chris Basham and uh, John Pearson from a Wednesday perspective. So first, first Steel City derby in five years. Um, the last two Steel City derbies were absolutely awful. They were both nil-nil draws in the year. Sheffield United got promoted to the Premier League. Um, the less said about those games, the better. So we're all hoping it's going to be slightly different this time. Um, but it's set up nice. I think a little bit like, look, Daryl Clark and Steve Evans aren't shy at aren't backwards at coming forwards, as we'd say in uh, in Yorkshire. And I don't think Danny Rowe and Chris Wilder are the, the same. I think that's set up quite nicely. Look, it's a little bit more uh, uh, wins for each team in the Steel City one. The uh, the first derby of the weekend tomorrow night, as I put to Mark Roberts uh, earlier on today. Uh, when I told him about the history between Rotherham and Barnsley, is uh, very much one-sided at the moment. 
in in Barnsley's favour. Um, the Millers haven't beaten uh, Barnsley for 42 years. They haven't won for 55 years at Oakwell in the league, 53 years in the Cup. And of the last 11 derbies, eight Barnsley wins and three draws. And Barnsley won the last four meetings, including a double in the season that uh, Mark Roberts was last with the club. So... Um, well, that's me stopping a tour and then tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, and that's pretty much what Mark Roberts said to me, oh, Steve. Like, when, when you look into it, it's like wow. You know, sometimes when you look at head to heads, there's not there's like nothing in it, or there's nothing that sticks out. This is one of the most uh, kind of lopsided head to heads over recent years that you've got. Look, and will it continue? Who knows? We'll, we'll see tomorrow. But as we've discussed, Barnsley got a great chance. As for the Steel City derby, look, Sheffield United are just out of the Premier League. Wednesday uh, scrape staying up last year. Sheffield United have got the parachute payments um, and all that kind of stuff going off and will be favourites for the game. But United have had a bit more consistency, but Wednesday have shown on certain days this year um, that they can turn up and compete against the best in the league. Look look at this week, for example. They get thumped 6-2 by Watford and then beat Norwich 2-0. You just don't know which Wednesday will turn up. So, look, it's, it, these are the kind of weekends we love. You know, they, yeah. I, I love my job. I love I love being across like lo- all of our different teams. You, you care about all the local teams. I'd love to be at Oakwell tomorrow night. I really would um, for that one because I've got a soft spot for both clubs in in from different perspectives. Really, obviously, I've covered Barnsley for since two thousand eight consistently, so that's that's a lot of maths. Um, uh, and Rotherham, I've done pretty much consistently now for about eight or nine years. So. Who knows? Be a great weekend. Be a great weekend. In a way, you kind of hope from our perspective that there's a winner in each. Yeah. It just makes things a bit more interesting on the phones. But I think like probably most people would take a draw in a lot of ways. We'll that's see. Probably, that's probably would, but it's not happening. Yeah. Most people would. I think that's a bit different, maybe, to the Steel City one. I think a lot of people in the in, in that one just really don't want to lose. Whereas I think Barnsley a bit a bit disappointed if they didn't win this one. Yeah. Ian, just just to sort of round up and go towards the end, um, big onus on the fans, isn't it? You know, we, we keep asking the question: Why is the home for? People talk about the atmosphere, the age-old question: What comes through the chicken egg? Do we need to perform it on the pitch to get behind them, or do the players wait for us to start cheering and still start playing? You know, we'll never know. But it is a derby, so it normally there's no, there shouldn't be a reason not to get behind them from from kickoff, should there? And and. I'm sure Rotherham will have sold out. So the atmosphere should be absolutely banging. It should be night game as well. I think that the atmosphere at Oakwell has uh, gone downhill in the last in recent seasons. However, the bigger games, when I think back to the Wednesday four two, I think back to when we beat Derby and yeah. um, Scarf Day. Uh, there's a number of higher profile g- games where the atmosphere everybody has come to the table and it's been a really crackling atmosphere and I, I'd, I'd like to think tomorrow will be that yeah. um, and it won't be like a morgue and it will actually um, be a, a, a spicy one tomorrow night. Chef yeah. United this season Ian, look at the, the, the cup yes. game yeah, I absolutely. Was a, you know, yeah. and that's with the top on a good Chef United side and that's yeah. with what, probably about 5,000 Barnsley and 5,000 Sheffield United there but the atmosphere was was really good so and i think the atmosphere got barnsley over the line that night as well because they, they spent a lot of time without the ball especially the last 20 30 minutes um so yeah i'm expecting a, a good uh, a good performance off the pitch as well as on tomorrow yeah and and there's no bad blood between the two teams it's a south yorkshire derby which which is fantastic there's no reminder needed because it's never really been an issue, but it's a Remembrance Day weekend as well. So before the match, the reef will be laid. They'll be asking for a minute silence, which besides the bloke shouting 50-50 or half-time draw, sometimes interrupts it. But that, that, I'm sure that's in on tomorrow as well. And um, Steve, altogether, it should be a cracking evening, should it? I hope so. Every, all, the, all the ingredients are there. 
We've just had bonfire night, so let's hope we get some fireworks tomorrow. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. And if, uh, Hold on. if 29 minutes, 19 seconds for you to just link that up, well done. You like that, didn't you? Yeah, we said yeah. half an hour, didn't we? I've yeah. already got me, uh, I've already got me headline as well for Adam for Saturday morning when uh, when we've won and Steve Evans is in job centre, so it'll be Evans above or the Evans have opened, and there you go, is another one, uh, another one leaving. So that'll be really nice as well. Um, <laughs> It's set up for a cracking night tomorrow. An unusual time for kicking off, quarter past seven. Some people will be struggling work-wise to get home, get changed and what have you, but I think uh, I think it should be a good turnout tomorrow night. I really do. It should. Um, before we go to the predictions, Dan, uh, last bit of news I heard today. Matty Wolf, um, obviously struggling with injury. His contract now has expired and it's not been renewed by the club. Um, they've offered for him to continue his recovery to full fitness at the club, so at least he can be in, you know, in fighting form whilst looking for a new club. Um, plagued by injuries, um, Adam, and one that when when he played, people took notice and said, "Oh, you know, he, he can play, can't he?" And for a young lad. Knee will probably heal and he'll play for another club. It's what he does mentally, isn't it, at such an age, when suddenly you find yourself unemployed, which it's hard. Isn't yeah, it? it's a real shame. I, um, I I spoke to him a little bit at one of the games earlier this season and he, he kind of said he was still a, a little bit of a way. He was still there in his, his kind of Barnsley um, tracksuit and all that kind of stuff. I just, I just feel really sorry for him because we've seen little glimmers of what could be a, a really good player and that's both at second tier and third tier level, really. Um, I just hope he, he does get fit um, and the, look, if if he does get fit and he, he does train a little bit with Barnsley, then the, the, the door might not be fully closed for him. I suspect from what Daryl Clark said at the presser earlier, um, to, I think it was Doug who asked the question about it, um, that Daryl Clark doesn't see him as as part of his his plans with the options that he's got in in midfield. So it may well be that, that that's it in terms of seeing Matty Wolf in a red shirt. But I, I don't think there's a single Barnsley fan that won't, won't wish him well mm-hmm. in terms of the future, that won't hope he gets a club, that won't hope he goes on. I can see him, if fit, Having a having a career at certainly League One, League Two level, um, and then it just depends what he does. But yeah, real real shame for him. Real yeah. shame for him because at times he looked like a real prospect. Yeah. So we come to that point again. Uh, Barnsley, let's call it unsteady at home. Rotherham not great away. South Yorkshire Derby quarter past seven kick off tomorrow evening, Friday evening. Let's go, Ian. Well, first, goal, first Barnsley goal scorer and full time result. Well, given given we we have been on the home farm, we still actually have only lost one at home this season. It's just drawn too many. I'll go for a first goal scorer. This is a lottery, this isn't it? Every week. Um, yeah, considering you did mm, Wigan, Keela Dunn. I'll go for the I'll go for the obvious, Keela Dunn, <laughs> uh, and I'll go two one Barnsley. Okay, um, I'll go three one, and I'll tell you what, I'll throw in the anti call. The Rotherham will score the first goal, Ooh. and that will spark a fight back and a, 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 a Clark a revolution on the pitch, whatever you want to call it. Um, you've been drinking, and, again. Yeah, <laughs> and I think Humphreys might, um, might start that fight back, so I'll go for three one. I'm going to go for the Vanti Cole, but he'll get a minute these days, so let's leave it there. And Steve, <laughs> what do you reckon then, Paul? Well, my good friend at work, Michael, evening Mick, <laughs> um, who incidentally has told me that he's retiring in April, the miserable bastard. Uh, I've tried to convince <laughs> him to stop, but he won't. So if anybody wants to uh, start a, a Facebook GoFundMe page to keep Mick at work, uh, let me know and we'll sort some it out. Anyway, like, you transfer some of your funds from your OnlyFans page. <laughs> I'm filming later, mate. I'll take me dressing gown off in a bit. I'm doing a bit of filming <laughs> later, so that'll be all right. Um, She's got I've, oil been, up. I've been waxing. We're all right. <laughs> like a dolphin's beak. Anyway, uh, my mate Mick, uh, he's gone 4 1 for tomorrow night. Uh, oh, DKD is going to score two. Uh, Umphreys is going to score two. And Josh Earl's going to. Uh, weighing with one, so you know he's uh, he's obviously been drinking heavily again, which we do at work. Um, 
Myself, I'm going to go to... Go on. You were going to say something then. You were going to be sarcastic then, weren't you? I got up and I got to more than four goals. Yeah, I got five as well. He gets two. Yeah. One for his gets two. No, one for his gets one. And Earl gets one. Oh, right. That were four when I went to school. I know it was a long time since, but... I went to school. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, we'll listen back. No, two one tomorrow. And I think Max Waters was going to continue his goal scoring form for me. That'd be good. And um, as an objective, neutral point of view, Adam, um, I'm, I'm not going to ask you what would you like to see because that wouldn't be fair, and I'm, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Name two players you think could be on the goals on the uh, on the score sheet tomorrow. Oh, I, I was going to go. I, I think Mark Roberts. He's uh, he's scoring a bit. He's got history in the fixture. Talked to him earlier. You know, he's he's got a sniff for the goals at the minute. See a little uh, a header from a corner, maybe first half. Um, I could see ooh, for Rotherham, I could see Sam Nombe popping up. He's got a few, a few recently. I, I think it'll be a narrow Barnsley win. I think it'll be a narrow Barnsley win. Probably two one, like like Ian says. Um, I'd be put it this way: I'd be if Rotherham go and, and win with everything that's going on at the minute. That would be the more surprising scoreline. What about the other match then, Adam? Yeah. What about the Steel City derby? Okay. Um, this has been recorded, isn't it? <laughs> well, we're going to use it. Use it many times. It's going, it should be going live, looking at the clock. You're probably looking at nine o'clock tonight, so it's past. So it's just just breaking up, breaking up. It's <laughs> gone. Um, it's gone. <laughs> I, I, it, it's just impossible to to predict. I mean, look, if you're going with form, you're saying a narrow Sheffield United win. I don't, I don't, I can't see anybody going crazy about it. But look, I'd go one nil Sheffield United probably if you're, if you're going for um, the, the the kind of bookies odds. Um, who knows what it'll be? But Sheffield United have been they haven't conceded at home since August. Um, they're obviously on a great run. If you take away the points deduction, the joint top of the division. Um, yeah, but look, tomorrow night, Sunday, it's Derby Day, isn't it? What a weekend! Derby Day, anything could happen. Has Sheffield Wednesday sold a normal three and a half million away tickets then? <laughs> Uh, I think so. I yeah, think I, I think there's yeah, usually yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's a weekend of football to look forward to starting tomorrow evening at Oakwell Quarter past Seven Barnsley versus Rotherham. Um, Ian, Steve, Adam, thank you very, very, very much for joining us this evening. And let's hope everybody enjoys themselves. Um, commiserations to those Rotherham fans travelling to Oakwell who have to go back again as well after full time. But you know what? You might win next weekend. You've been listening to the Reds Report, and we'll be back next week. You Reds. <laughs>